In this video I'll provide a review of the Realty Income Stock and what I personally look for when evaluating potential stock purchases. I'll discuss what Realty Income do as a business and how they make money. I'll also look at some of the numbers and metrics that could be useful in evaluating the company. My personal goal is to create a dividend portfolio that provides me with a passive income. For me, stock analysis for my goals comes down to two points. Does the company have a history of paying reliable and growing dividends? And can the company continue to make profits and therefore pay dividends for decades to come? So who are Realty Income? Realty Income are a real estate investment trust, or REIT, that invests in freestanding, single-tenant commercial properties in the US, Puerto Rico and the UK. In a nutshell, Realty Income buy commercial properties and rent them out under long-term agreements usually around 10 to 20 years. Commercial property includes shops, restaurants, gyms, theatres, supermarkets, etc. Effectively, commercial property is just real estate that is intended for profit-generating activities. REITs are required to earn at least 75% of their income from rental properties or investments in real estate, and they must also pay out 90% of profits to investors as dividends. As long as they meet these requirements, REITs pay no corporate taxes. The company is one of a few real estate investment trusts that pay dividends monthly, and has actually registered a trademark for the phrase, the monthly dividend company. Realty Income owns over 6,500 properties, and has around 600 tenants in 51 industries. Their top 10 largest tenants by revenue are Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, FedEx, Dollar Tree, LA Fitness, Regal, AMC Cinemas, Sainsbury's, and Walmart. So if we look at the types of properties that Realty Income own, 84.6% of the portfolio is in retail, 10.4% industrial, 3.3% office buildings, and 1.7% agriculture. If we then break that down further into industries, we can see that the top five industries are convenience stores with 12% of the portfolio, grocery stores with 9.6%, drug stores with 8.2%, dollar stores 7.6%, and health and fitness 6.8%. Those five industries account for nearly half of the total portfolio. A lot of people might worry about investing in physical retail, as they might believe that online shopping will render it obsolete in the future. However, Realty Income focuses on three specific types of retail clients. Non-discretionary, businesses that sell things that people need, service-based, i.e. gyms and theatres, and discount-oriented, low price products. The idea is that these businesses are not easily disrupted by e-commerce competitors and are also fairly recession resistant. Realty Income claim that 96% of total portfolio rent is protected against retail e-commerce threats. For example, if you needed to nip to the local shop for a loaf of bread, you aren't going to order that online. You'd go to a convenience store. It's a similar story for grocery shopping, even if you order your shopping online, there still needs to be a physical store. Again, for health and fitness, if you're going to work out, you would typically go to the gym to use their equipment and facilities. That being said, the pandemic has affected Realty Income's ability to collect some of their rent, and last quarter's results show that 18% of rent from health and fitness tenants wasn't collected, 5% from restaurants wasn't collected, and a massive 87% from movie theatres wasn't collected. This was just due to the pandemic forcing these industries to shut down. Still, in total, 93.6% of contractual rent due was paid in the last quarter. Even with all of the disruption caused by the pandemic, this is a really high number, and shows that the company is well positioned to survive even the most difficult of conditions. Realty Income have really improved the structure of their portfolio since 2009, where they have strategically acquired more investment-grade tenants for their properties. An investment-grade tenant is a tenant rated BAA1 or better by
by Moody's Credit Score Rankings, or BBB or better by S&P's Credit Score Rankings. Moody's and S&P are just two of the most respected credit rating agencies. To break this down further, in 2009, Realty Income only had one investment grade tenant in their top 15 tenants, shown in green. Over the years, the company has completely restructured their portfolio, where in 2020, they had eight investment grade tenants in their top 15 tenants, which accounts for 22% of the total rent. This is pleasing for me as an investor, as the more investment grade tenants in their portfolio, the more likely those tenants are to be able to pay the rent without defaulting, which obviously means more revenue for Realty Income. Realty Income have also grown their property portfolio considerably since 1992, where they've gone from 634 properties to 6,592 properties by the end of 2020. Over this period, they've averaged 213 property purchases per year, By increasing their property portfolio, they increase the amount of rent they're able to receive. This extra revenue drives the dividend payments and dividend increases. Obviously, a big issue for Realty Income would be to have vacant properties, as a property without a tenant wouldn't bring in any revenue and would likely cost the company money for upkeep and maintenance. But if we look at the occupancy levels since 1996 for the properties that Realty Income own, We can see this to be consistently high, and never drops below 96% during the time frame. Again, this is very desirable for me as an investor, as historically, no more than 4% of their huge property portfolio at any time is vacant and unable to generate revenue. Let's now take a look through the numbers that I find useful in evaluating stocks. Realty Income has a current dividend yield of 4.65%, Last year's dividend yield averaged 4.63%, so it's a positive sign for dividend investors that the yield has increased slightly. It just means that we're able to purchase discounted income. In fact, Realty Income have increased their dividend consecutively for 27 years, which makes them a dividend aristocrat. This is a company that have increased their dividends consecutively for at least 25 years. Over the past five years, the average dividend per share growth rate was 4.2% per year. And during the past 10 years, the average dividend per share growth rate was 5.4% per year. So the dividend growth has slowed down in the short term, but it's still important to remember that it is still growing. I do usually look at the payout ratio history in my stock reviews, but as a REIT is forced to pay out over 90% of their income as dividends, I don't feel it's relevant here. The market cap of Realty Income is 22.36 billion US dollars, which classifies it as a large cap company. This is a company with a market cap between 10 billion and 200 billion. I like these large blue chip companies in my dividend portfolio as they tend to be mature, stable organisations, and the dividends tend to be more reliable than smaller cap companies or new startups. Realty Income has a share price of $59.96, which puts it pretty much in the middle of the 52-week price range. The 52-week low price of $38 happened in March 2020, and the stock has recovered since then. The current price is attractive to me and looks stable when you compare it to the 50-day average of $60.51 and the 200-day average of $61.15. So now we'll have a look at the dividend history of the company. Realty Income first started paying dividends in 1994 and have increased their dividend every year ever since, showing a clear upward trend. This is obviously very pleasing as a dividend investor as it shows me that the company is committed to not only paying dividends each year but also increasing them too. As Realty Income pay monthly dividends, They've actually increased their monthly payout on 109 occasions since 1994, which is a pretty amazing statistic. Businesses that can grow their dividends at a steady rate and maintain a consistent payout can generate substantial wealth for shareholders over the long term. Now let's have a look at the chart showing Realty Income's revenue, cash flow and net income on a trailing 12-month basis. It's important to look at dividend history but we also need to look at the company's earning potential and trends, 
as the revenue and profits of the company will drive future dividend increases. The first thing I notice is the really steep increase in revenue. Revenue for realty income is driven from rental payments, and revenue growth is driven from either new property acquisitions or increases in the current rental prices. The net income line is also showing a positive upward trend, with a slight drop-off in 2020. At first this looked odd as the revenue was increasing, so it appeared there must have been some extra cost somewhere to affect net income, which is calculated as just revenue minus expenses. Looking deeper into the company financial statements to try and find a reason for this, I saw that Realty Income had recorded a $79 million provision for the impairment of some of the movie theatre properties it owned, which explains the drop. An impairment is basically an accounting treatment where a company reduces the value of an asset that it considers damaged, unusable or less worthy. So in this instance, as movie theatres have been closed and unable to generate revenue, Realty Income have felt the need to reduce the value of those assets on the balance sheet to reflect this, which also decreases the net income. The cash flow has been increasing, showing another positive upward trend. Again, this is great to see, as at the most fundamental level, a company's capacity to provide a return for shareholders, either through business growth or dividends, is determined by its ability to generate positive cash flows. So for Realty Income to have a growing level of cash inflow each year bodes well for the future of the company and the future dividend payments. So what is my opinion on Realty Income? Traditional bricks and mortar retail businesses are being challenged by e-commerce. But after looking at Realty Income's list of tenants, the majority don't compete directly with Amazon or any other online retailers. Some tenants have been negatively impacted by the global pandemic. Movie theatres, gyms and restaurants have suffered large losses while their facilities have been closed. This has placed a strain on Realty Income's ability to collect some rents as they come due, but with the vaccine being rolled out across the world, these industries should pick up again. I think one of the possible headwinds the company could face is if movie theatres don't recover to their pre-COVID levels and some tenants face bankruptcy. With the increase in popularity of online streaming services at home, it remains to be seen how long the movie theatre industry will last for. Although this would only account for 5.6% of Realty Income's portfolio. I think that convenience stores will always exist, as will grocery stores, pharmacies, drug stores and gyms, and all of these make up a significant portion of Realty Income's portfolio. If you're looking for guaranteed dividends, then REITs are perfect due to them being forced to pay out 90% of their income as dividends. Realty Income is well diversified across multiple defensive industries, has a giant portfolio of over 6,500 properties, and a solid history of dividend growth. Along with its business fundamentals, it also boasts a really attractive 4.65% dividend yield. I currently hold 16 shares of Realty Income and plan to keep purchasing many more in the future. Remember that this isn't investment advice and you should always do your own research and due diligence before making any share purchases. I hope that you've enjoyed the latest video in my stock review series. If you have, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss any future videos. Please also feel free to check out some of the other stock review videos I've done on my channel. And finally, please let me know what stocks you'd like me to review in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.